Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase we're going to be looking at a very popular Decepticon combiner, Menasaur. What we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a quick look at him combined, we'll have a look at the different head variant that was available at the time, we can have a look at all the individual Stunticons in their robot and alternate modes, as well as the Stunticon leader Motormaster and I'll show you some of the different ways you can display him in base mode. I'm also lucky enough to have a couple of different types of packaging from all around the world so we can have a look at that as well. So we've got some Italian, we've got some Spanish and I'm lucky enough to have a couple of original Hasbro as well. Before we get started with this video I want to make a big thank you to all you viewers and I really do mean it for everybody who watches my videos, likes and comments and especially subscribes. I'm nearly on 700 subscribers now so again thank you ever so much. Okay let's get started. So there he is right in the middle. I'm going to pick him up in a minute. Menasaur. I'm going to pick the camera up as well so you can have a bit more detail and a much better view on a few things. But before we get started, <clears throat> you can probably see the way that I've got him displayed here is different to what's on the box. I've got him there with drag strip as an arm, dead end as an arm, and of course breakdown and wild rider as feet. Now I know that on the boxes that it's different. You've got drag strip and breakdown as the arms. Now I want to just give you a reason for why that I put it that way. Um, I was actually, I think, lucky enough to have menacer as a child and i suppose that's probably why i've got a bit of a fondness for him um he did seem to be the easiest sort of combiner to, to get yourself i never had a gift set though so i know the picture on the gift set as i say is slightly different but in the uk and i'm presuming the rest of the world to be honest that whenever he was um advertised in the paraphernalia and all the pamphlets he was pretty much the way that i've got him there so this is the everybody's seen this um flyer and if you have a look there if i get it close enough there he is see you got drag strip as an arm and there uh, and dead end as an arm and this was everywhere this was in pretty much all the flyers even um in the japanese books as well recently because i must confess when i got this book i was like i don't understand that but the main reason and for uk viewers maybe this might jog a few memories or bring back some happy things remember this pull out that we got and you can see there it's quite weird even though you've got breakdown there and drag strip there when we had this magazine, it's brilliant. We pulled it out and most of us, I'm sure, had this poster up on our walls. And this was the one I had up and there you can see we have drag strip and dead ender's arms. So that's the main reason. If anybody comments why we have not got it the same as that, that is the reason why. Um, and to be honest, throughout most of his advertising, he does have different configurations. Um, even in this particular flyer, he's there with drag strip and dead end the other way around. Anyway, enough about that then. Let's have a look at the figure. So what I want to show you quickly as well, there was an alternate variant um, head mould. This all is, he had the painted eyes there and this didn't. Um, this is one of the smallest uh, combiners, G1 combiners, probably the smallest, but it's also the most robust. It's one of the easiest to stand. It doesn't fall over very easy. I've totally jinxed myself now in case he does. And I think he looks really, really good. Um, as I said, he's made up of five Stunticons. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just quickly pick up the camera because I want to focus on Motormaster first. So Motormaster is the leader. And there he is. That's him in his robot mode. And let's have a look at his normal alternate mode first. There we go. And then this is one of the particular ways I've seen the base mode displayed. And I've also seen it with this bit. Well, I can't I'll do it with the other one in a minute. I can't do it with one hand. Um, so this is the one also that can obviously connect to Triptychon. That's another way that I've seen the base laid out. And there's another way that I've seen the base laid out. And again, as I said, I've also seen it with this on the top. There's so many different variants of how this figure can be used and displayed. Let's put that back there. We're going to have a quick look now at some of the packaging. So this is the original Motormaster box, 1986. That's when this figure was released. The box is a bit battered. Um, and funnily enough, I've noticed that there and I've never ever displayed him that way. I've only ever displayed him the way that I've got him with the legs there. I only fold the legs out for when I'm combining him. Here's the very famous battle scene used in 86. You two Titans, Metroplex and Triptychon. And there you've got um, all the five Stunticons where my thumb is, just showing you which ones they are to make up men Menasaur. We'll have a quick look at the um, European release box. This came out in 1990, so they were all reissued in 1990. This is the English version because it's full English on the box. There he is again. 
and unfortunately the battle scene's not as good this time. We've just got a couple of MicroMaster playsets advertised there because that's of course in 1990 when they were advertising and the main um, wave of figures was all the MicroMaster bases. So there is MotorMaster. We're going to have a look at Breakdown now and his alternate mode is of course the Lamborghini Countach. So let's have a quick look at him. Let's pick this up. So we've got the alternate mode there which is fantastic and it comes with a double barrel blaster at the top and then if we have a look at his robot mode over there there he is they did have all these little guns so be be aware that these little guns are quite easily lost but there he is in that mode and then what i'm going to do now i'm going to quickly show you the italian variant box i've got so i'm going to Ital apologize now to all my italian viewers if i pronounce this wrong but the cool thing about these gig boxes is that they were authorized from Takara, as you can see there, and they were made by Gig in Italian, over here in Italy, obviously, and they changed it to Transformer, but they also changed the names, so that might be pronounced Caimano, it might not be. I'm ever so sorry if that's wrong. We'll spin it round and then look at this amazing battle scene on the back. I've still got the two Titans, but they're in their different modes. Amazing, amazing little battle scene. And in honesty, I've said this loads of times with regards to the Japanese boxes. I just prefer these to the cards. I think they display better. They obviously don't take up as much space. And you haven't got to worry about them falling off. So there is breakdown. What we're going to do now, let's have a look at drag strip. I might as well pick it up. It's probably easier, isn't it? There we go. There's drag strip in his alternate mode. With the double barrel, again, blaster on the top. And of course, drag strips. Alternate mode is a Tyrell P34 six-wheeler race car. And here's his robot mode. So there we go. The good thing about this was obviously the chrome and the engine, which could be folded up and down depending on which mode he was in. What I will do is I'll go have I'll show you all of the um, carded figures in a second as well, as well as the gift set. So before we get to Wild Rider, let's show you his original card. The card's a bit battered, but it's still Mint on seal card original, there he is. And if we spin it right, it's interesting, as I say, where these come from, because that says, you can't focus on it, it says 9,800, I'm presuming that that's Pesetas, because that would have been just, I don't know, I'm, I'm not too sure, to be honest, I'm presuming it's Pesetas, but here's one of the original cards. Great stuff. So, let's have a quick look at Wild Rider. I think, to be honest, that Wild Rider seems to be one of the rarest on the secondary market nowadays. He seems to be the one that's most valuable. I'm not too sure why. I do know obviously that in the Combiner Wars when they re-released all these figures, he was the one that was missing. I think it was due to copyright. So they replaced him um, and changed his name. And there is the robot mode again. They've got these lovely little blasters. They look really, really good. So the final one of course is Dead End. Let's have a look at him. Oh, I forgot to tell you that Wild Rider was of course a Ferrari now we've got dead end and of course he's a Porsche in his alternate mode lovely lovely very very basic obviously transformations very basic robots but of course the gimmick that they were going for is the fact that they were known in Japan as scramble city robots and the fact that they were able to basically mix the limbs up which I suppose in a way is just um, giving you an example of what I was saying earlier about how they set up all the figures the fact that you could mix their arms up, you could mix them up. Breakdown could, of course, be an arm or a leg. And, of course, he could as well combine with any of the other combiner leaders. So he literally, if you wanted to, and I'm sure you've seen a couple of videos, maybe with my son's stuff, where he hasn't got all the stunts cons and he's done a bit of a mishmash. In fact, if you stay till the end, guys, I'll put a Menosaur video from my little boy up as well so you can have a look and a little giggle at that. Right, before we have a look at the actual box sets, let's have a look at some of the carded variants. And the reason for that is because a lot of them are quite different. So let's start with drag strip because I've got the most of him. And what we've got over here, this is a dual French and Dutch mint on seal card. And again, these were all released in 1990. I'll spin this round just because if I do this one, I won't have to do the rest. It's just the basic transformation on the back, showing you where the stickers go. And again, alerting you to the fact that you do need the five stunticons but this is a dual language french and dutch card we've then got the english classic card fortunately a bit of yellow bubble in there and then we've got the spanish version so everything's in spanish again these are all official generation one releases they're all mint on seal card and they all came out in 1990 we've got a spanish breakdown we've got spanish no we haven't sorry 
yes there's the Spanish dead end so I've got all four Spanish and then this is dead end in the dual language again so you've got the Dutch and the French let's break down in Dutch and French and Wild Rider in Spanish what we're going to do now then we're going to have a quick look at the actual gift set so bear with me I'm going to pick this up try and rest it carefully for you there so we'll have a look at the standard Hasbro box first and foremost and yes some of them are missing but that's obviously because they're out on display for this video so this is the gift set I wish I'd have had a gift set when I was a kid to be fair but there you go they do look so so good all in place lovely artwork for Menasaur there and of course if we spin it round on the back we've got a different battle scene this is the 1985 battle scene that was used a lot there's the Dinobots, Jetfire, Shockwave, and of course, Red Tracks hiding there. And then we've got the six tech specs on the back as well, because of course there's one for Menasaur. Right, let's have a look at the interesting one now. And the reason why I say this interesting is because it is gig, so it's an Italian exclusive. And what they did, as I've already shown you with breakdowns, they changed the names. So the big thing, as we say, is it's Transformers, and they call it Pentacar. Now I'm presuming that that just means five car, and the reason why I'm guessing that is because of obviously Pent Pentagon and I've got the Gig Superior box set where he's called Pentajet. But the interesting thing is, let's have a look at some of the names. So for Wild Rider, number three, he's called Squalo. I hope I've got that right. I do apologise. Number one is Cobra and I'm well aware of that because that's just a cool name and I've seen him pop up on a few other things. Barracuda would be Motormaster, but again he's out on display. And the reason why I'm familiar with that is because unfortunately I missed out on a gig barracuda on ebay a couple of months back drag strip is now interestingly known as iguana and there is breakdown at the bottom kaimino and of course there's the gig logo so that's the main differences the battle scene everything else is exactly the same lovely lovely battle scene excellent so as you say he's one of my favorite combiners um he is yeah he gets reissued quite quite a lot of times i've already mentioned combiner wars he nearly, nearly got a Generation 2 uh, re-release, not re-release, release at the time, in 94, I believe it was. And of course, if you're lucky enough to have any of them figures, they are incredibly rare because most of them are test shots. There are some about. You can have a Google, you can find some very, very rare pieces. I'm not lucky enough to have any of them and don't think I'll have any as well in the foreseeable future. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to quickly again pick the camera up and let's have a quick pan over everything that we may have missed. So... We've got the gold cards all at the bottom there. As I say, at the very, very end, in a second, I'm gonna just tie a little Menasaur video of my son's, just for you guys' enjoyment. And I suppose just to see the innocence of a child and how their imagination works. He's got, he's got just a few figures. He hasn't got all of the stunt cons just yet and I mean, I haven't managed to give him all of the pieces either. So it's interesting to see, as I say, and, rekindle our childhood imagination of what exactly he does with it all but here we go guys that is Menasaur as I say if you've got the variant with the head which hasn't got the eyes coloured in that's completely normal it's not a KO it's just a different variant that was released at the time so again I already said it at the beginning but I want to say it again I honestly mean it I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch any of my videos giving any suggestions for new subscribers of the people who've just found this channel I've got every single generation one figure um, released by Hasbro at the time. Not all the Takaras just yet. Uh, I've been collecting, you know, well over 20 years, so this isn't just something that I've fallen into. I've only just decided to start to share it with you guys, though. So, um, again, if you want me to showcase a video, maybe it could be a figure that you always wanted as a kid. Maybe it's one that you've got as a kid, or maybe you just want to see some different variants. I would love to do it, and, of course, dedicate the video to yourself. So, I'm going to sign off right now, but stay to the end, because I'm going to tie in my little boy's menasaur video as well so once again everybody thank you very much for watching subscribing commenting and take care hello everybody this is toys Bot, and for this special video i'm going to transform these little robot into a big robot and now here's motor master pull his arms out straighten his body out pull his arms out pull his legs up and now this one has the zoop and this one is going over 
And now the leg strip has to go on the legs. And now this one needs one strike down. And then now this one is very easy. And now click it on and that's how you make Minotaur. Thank you for looking and subscribe for more soon.